What are the most common anxiety issues that people suffer with? And why do we worry about them so much? What are the point? How do we stop? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time, I'm Tim Box, mind coach, anxiety therapist, and author of the book, Clear Your Head. For more than a decade now, I've been working one-to-one -one with clients to help them overcome all sorts of anxiety-related issues. During that time, I must have seen the full range of different issues that people can become anxious about. Although every time I think that, you can guarantee someone will come along with something I haven't dealt with or even heard of before. I guess the lesson there is that we're all different and none of our worries or concerns are invalid because they all mean something to us as an individual. That being said, there are some common situations and concerns that tend to crop up more regularly than others as a potential cause for anxiety. In this video, I'm gonna throw a skimming stone across the pond of anxiety and talk you through the top three most common issues I help people deal with every day. I'm also gonna explain what we can actually do to manage these concerns so that anxiety itself doesn't become the main issue. So, in no particular order, Now I say in no particular order, but I think it's probably safe to put this one at the top of the list, and that is fear of illness. Worrying about personal health is a hugely common source of anxiety. And why wouldn't it be? Safety and survival sit pretty high up on our list of priorities, not least because it's the foundation stone of our happiness. We can't feel happy if we don't feel safe. So if we feel our health is being threatened, that's gonna potentially create a large amount of anxiety. But health anxiety isn't reserved for our own health. Often we can become anxious about the health of our loved ones. Those who play a major role in our life are essentially part of what makes us happy. The possibility of losing them threatens that happiness and thus can create anxiety and even fear. Now, of course, becoming excessively anxious and fearful can often come with certain physical sensations, which only exacerbates health anxiety because we're probably already monitoring our physical well-being for potential symptoms anyway. Any physical sensations that seem unusual, even when they're nothing to actually worry about, often just feed into those health anxieties. But whilst recognizing the importance of maintaining our health is a good thing, we want to avoid making the mistake of focusing on it so much that we make ourselves feel unwell. Remember, we're not here to simply survive, we're here to enjoy our time. As a wise man once said, a ship in harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. Whilst it's perfectly valid to argue that money doesn't equal happiness, there's no doubt that having no money can be a severe impediment to it. This is why we get so anxious about our financial stability. Now this might manifest as fears about being able to pay the bills, anxieties about managing any debts we have, or thoughts about long-term job security and savings. Inevitably, these concerns might extend to anxiety about the source of our income, so our job. We might start to feel anxious about our performance at work and potential career progression. Am I doing well enough to keep my job? Am I doing well enough to advance in my career? Am I managing to save enough money to support me in my later years? Because our job represents a huge percentage of our day-to-day -day time and activity, if we start to get overly anxious about any aspect of it, then that means we're gonna spend a lot of time feeling anxious. But of course, financial concerns, they make perfect sense. Money plays a huge role in our life to the point where most people on the planet will think about money in some capacity pretty much every single day. But whilst anxiety about money is pretty natural, what we want to avoid is the idea of not having enough money becoming such a perceived threat that we can't now focus on anything else. Whether it's a romantic partner, a close friendship, or family dynamics, becoming anxious about the quality of our relationships is incredibly common. The quality of our interpersonal relationships is very often part of how we measure our happiness. So anxieties about this area can involve fear of rejection, conflict, or even abandonment. All of these concerns are also drivers behind things like social anxiety and public speaking anxiety. The fear that we'll be judged harshly and ultimately rejected. This is because we are at our core a tribal species and we rely on the alliances we form with others to feel loved, safe and protected. Knowing that others care about us and are looking out for us allows us to feel comfortable in who we are and secure that our future is positive. 
The problem becomes when we start to feel dependent on certain relationships to remain happy, then we become vulnerable to losing that connection and might feel like we couldn't cope without it. This is what ultimately causes anxiety about our relationships, the fear of loss. Whilst the right relationship can be the best thing in the world, we generally make the best connections when we're comfortable with the idea of being alone. When we have a core belief in our own ability to cope with life's challenges without too much assistance from others, then we're free to be ourself and make more lasting positive connections. Okay, the first thing to say here is that if the thing you're most anxious about isn't on this list, then that's not because you're weird or you have something going on that nobody's experienced before. It just means that this was a list of three out of hundreds of different potential concerns. Apologies if yours wasn't on this list. But here's the thing to remember. All of these concerns are perfectly natural and understandable. In fact, you could show this video to pretty much anyone on the planet and they'll be able to in some way relate to one or more of these. These are not malfunctions, they're natural concerns of a healthy human being that cares about their happiness and well-being. So the message here is that of all the things we might be anxious about, you don't need to be anxious about how anxious these topics make you. Because what really should be top of the list is the anxiety about anxiety, the fear of feeling anxious. Regardless of what each client I see feels was the starting point for feeling anxious, in nearly all instances, the problem now is how anxious they feel about how anxious they've become. So firstly, recognize this. If you feel anxious about some aspect of your life that challenges you, that's okay. It's even okay if you become excessively anxious to the point where your concern feels out of proportion to the actual threat of the situation. Everyone on the planet will become excessively anxious about something at some point in their lives. Your job here is to appreciate your concerns rather than labeling them as maladaptive or pathological. As long as we don't start creating anxiety about how anxious we feel, then the anxiety passes as the situation we are anxious about passes. Now having said that, Let's give you something useful here to deal with those ongoing human concerns such as health, money, and relationships. Okay, so here we go. When it comes to life's daily challenges, here are your ABCs of anxiety management. These are three simple rules to remember whenever you feel anxious about something. A, the thing you fear is not as likely to happen as you imagine. Now, whether you're worried about dying from a currently undiscovered illness, losing your job, or your partner leaving you, recognize that our imagination is a powerful thing. Our mind will present the scenario in such a vivid manner that it'll feel like it's certain to happen. When in reality, the worst case scenario we fear is extremely unlikely to happen. Because as far as our life goes, 99.99% .99 of the time, nothing much of interest happens at all. B, even if it did happen, the consequences would be less impactful than you imagine. Whenever we imagine the worst case scenario, we inevitably add on the worst possible impact of that scenario. So if we get ill, we'll die. If we lose our job, we'll end up homeless. If we break up with our partner, we'll remain heartbroken and unable to function forever. When in most cases, the truth is nothing like that. If we get ill, we get better. If we lose our job, we find another. If we break up with our partner, we survive and very probably at some point find someone else. Recognize that even though you can imagine the most disastrous impact on your life, what you're imagining is not actually real. It's just your imagination. C, your ability to cope is far greater than you currently credit yourself. It's a simple truth that we're not anxious about the thing, we're anxious about our ability to cope with the thing. So recognize that you have far more agency in your journey than the anxious version of you currently gives yourself credit for. As unlikely as it is that the bad thing will happen, and as much as you have exaggerated the potential impact in your mind, even if everything happened as you imagine it in your worst nightmares, don't rule out your own ability to cope. As you sit here watching this video, you have got the other side of every challenge in your life so far. It's highly likely you'll find the resources to navigate the next one whatever that might be. So the next time you feel anxious about something in your life that feels very real and falls in the category of things that are ongoing that demand focus and attention, remind yourself of those three simple ideas. Always remember your anxiety ABCs. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more anxiety content that helps put you 
back in control. And if you want more tips on overcoming anxiety, check out the members area of the channel where you'll find more resources to help you on your journey, as well as access to a weekly members only live stream where I answer your anxiety related questions directly. But that's all for now. I'm Tim Box, always remember, be kind to your mind and I'll see you next time.